سبحان الله يا الله الله أكبر Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the world of Islam coming to you from Washington DC in the United States of America from Denmark to China from Australia to Argentina from the USA to the UK there are more than 1.5 billion Muslims in the world today the religion of Islam is the fastest growing religion on earth but unfortunately the true nature of Islam is often misrepresented and misunderstood So I invite you to join us as we travel throughout the world of Islam and give you the opportunity to know the truth about Islam and the truth about Muslims. You are now entering the world of Islam. And I'm joined now by one of my brothers in Islam, Imam Abdul Malik Johari. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. And thank you for agreeing to sit and spend some time with us and contribute to this documentary about Islam in America. Imam Johari, let me just ask you as we begin, just tell us a bit about yourself your upbringing and how you came to Islam. Well, subhanallah, I I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, mm-hmm. born uh, August the 19th, 1956. Mm-hmm. To parents, my mother is from Louisiana, the northern part of Louisiana, mm-hmm. and my father from the Caribbean, Barbados. Mm-hmm. Uh, they met in New York, and I grew up in the church which is the American version of the Church of England or Anglican Church, called Episcopal Church. Mm-hmm. So I grew up in the, uh, the Episcopal Church, uh, but in the summers I would visit my relatives in the South mm-hmm. who were a more sort of Church of God in Christ kind of light, you know, Pentecostal light. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they had all of the, the traditions of a very organic Christian-based relationship. Even though they had very few pictures, um, they didn't have the cross and that kind of stuff like we had in the Anglican Church. Mm -hmm. But their religious experience was very uh, everyday. Mm -hmm. It affected their morals. It affected their ethics. It affected uh, what they ate and and, and how they spent their time. Their evenings were spent uh, going to worship services. So you can imagine having that experience, and then I'd go back to New York and have this sort of, you know, churches on Sunday and you sing in a choir but I sang in a choir mm-hmm. so uh, the clothes that I wear now most of the time uh, just like the clothes I used to wear when I uh, I was a choir boy yeah I know when I take my throat to the cleaners here they want to call it a choir robe right. you know? <laughs> but I, after I found out you get a discount for a choir yeah, robe, you, I said, you, my you, don't, you don't say anything yeah you just just like let it go right and uh, get the discount right. but alhamdulillah um, but by the time I reached the age of confirmation. Mm-hmm. And what does that mean, confirmation? Um, it is believed in that tradition that, that uh, just uh, in, in much the same way as Muslims, we, we believe that uh, a person who is below the age of puberty um, really doesn't have the responsibility for much of their deeds. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's believed in this tradition in the Anglican Church that when you reach the age of puberty, you should accept, you should take shahada, in a sense, Mm -hmm. and accept the creed of the religion that you have become a part of. Mm -hmm. And so they have a special class called confirmation class. Mm -hmm. And subhanAllah, one of the things in the confirmation class, you have to memorize the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. This is from the book of Exodus. And... You know, there's some dialogue to make sure that, you know, you understand as a young person. So I was in a class of other young people, and, you know, the priest asked, uh, who knows the first commandment? Mm-hmm. So go ahead. 
Uh, my, 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 my birth name is Winslow. I'm named after my father. Mm -hmm. So I'm a junior. I'm Winslow Jr. Right. So I said, Winslow, go ahead. So I said, uh, uh, know that your God is a jealous God and refuses to have any God worship besides him. Mm -hmm. So he was like, very good. Now I'm asking a question. <laughs> I said, Father, why do we have three gods in the church, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, when it says here, the first commandment is that there's only one God. Mm -hmm. He said it's only one God, but it's three at one. I said, I, it says one, it's three and one. It's one of the mysteries of our faith. You just have to accept it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. nobody really was able just to explain it to you in a way which was understandable. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, it was, it, 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 there was something in the, the question that I thought a person who went to seminary, he should be able to explain to me, well, you see right here, it says, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. and the thing, and it says that know that I am whatever, but it doesn't say that. All it says is there's only one. So I was like... Now, how old are you at this time? Like 13. Now, which is very interesting, because within the, the Christian tradition, now you have to remember, I sit in church every Sunday. Mm -hmm. I sit behind the priest at... 10, 11, 12, 13, I listen to the sermon week after week, month after month, year after year. And their services, the subjects that they cover, they cover the same subject every third Sunday in September. The fourth Sunday in September, they cover this. So after years, you get to know the subject matter. Mm -hmm. So I know. So I, you know, so I said to him, well, Father, this, this this idea there's only one God is it's kind of profound in the in the book. He said, Well, it's it's only one, but it's a mystery. I said, okay. Next, who knows the second commandment? Mm -hmm. He shouldn't have picked on me. Mm -hmm. I guess maybe I was the only maybe I was the only kid who was asking the question. He said, What is it? I said, No, that thou shalt not make to thyself any graven image. Mm -hmm. No statues, no pictures, no graven image, or the likeness of anything that is in the earth or on the earth or in the water in the earth. It goes on to describe, thou shalt not bow down to them, nor worship them. Mm -hmm. Very good. Follow-up question. I said, Father, why is it that when I go to the church as an altar boy, there are many altars in the church, and to get to my place in the choir seats, you have to pass by these altars, and when you pass by them, you have to stop, you bow, and you make the sign of the cross, and you, you have some reverence, right? You look up at the thing, and then you move on. Mm -hmm. So to get from the choir room, the main sanctuary, a little small altar, and then another little one you got to pass by. So I've already, to get to class, I didn't go through two or three bowing and, 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 and saying my prayer, right? Mm -hmm. So he said, well, no, 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 no. We're not worshiping the statues. We're using the statues to focus our worship to God. Mm -hmm. I said, well, Father, that's, that's, that's interesting. I said, but it says, thou shall not bow down, nor worship. Mm -hmm. I may not be worshiping, mm -hmm. but I'm definitely bowing down. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't have said that. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, he, he was, he, you know, he had to look like, okay, that's enough. Mm -hmm. That's enough. We're not, we not having this, right? Uh, I told you we're not worshiping it. We're moving on to the next subject. I'm sure the other kids in the class, they was relieved too. Because mm -hmm. they were like, we want to go outside and play. We got a ball game or whatever. And this kid who's 13 is going through this thing. But it is not just that. But for me, I know that according to the tradition they taught in church, when Jesus was about the same age, mm -hmm. 